its neonatal resuscitation in five minutes. This is no substitute for an actual NRP course, but if you've got a little one coming in hot, this is for you. The first step is to find the baby warmer. Then you've got to turn it on. It's usually around the back. Make sure you turn the heat on full blast, plug in the air, the yellow tube, the oxygen, the green tube, set the peak inspiratory pressure at around 20 to 25, and set the peep at around five. Make sure you have an appropriate size mask as well. To orient you, you are here on the NRP algorithm, term, tone, and crying. If the baby is term, has good tone, and good respiratory effort, you're going to just clamp and cut the cord at around 30 to 60 seconds and leave the baby with the mom, skin to skin, and you'll just check on them periodically. But if the baby's not term, doesn't have good tone, or doesn't have good respiratory effort, that is a strong cry, you're going to want to clamp and cut the cord and proceed with warm, dry, suction, and stimulate. Suctioning is mouth first, one hole, then nares, two holes. Most of the time, that's all it's going to take. But if things are not going well, you may find yourself here on the NRP algorithm. If the baby doesn't have apnea or heart rate less than 100, but they still have labored breathing or persistent cyanosis beyond what you'd expect for the normal values in the table there, you're going to need to position the airway, suction the baby, again, mouth, then nares, and place a sap probe on the right hand. And if you have it, place them on an ECG monitor. They may need supplemental oxygen, so you may need to dial up from 21% to 30%, and they may need CPAP, 5 to 8 centimeters of water pressure. If the baby has apnea or heart rate less than 100, you're going to need to give positive pressure. You need to make sure you move the chest. You may need to dial up the peak inspiratory pressure, even up to 40 transiently, in order to move the chest wall. Make sure they have a sap probe on the right hand and place them on an ECG monitor if you have it. Now we've moved to here on the NRP algorithm. If the baby's doing better and the heart rate's greater than 100, move to usual post-resuscitation care. If the heart rate's less than 100, you're going to need to bag the baby better, which means Mr. Sopa. Adjust the mask, reposition the airway, suction mouth then nose, open the mouth, and increase the pressure to make sure you're moving the chest. You may need to place an airway, either an LMA, or you may need to intubate with an endotracheal tube. For an equipment size chart, see the next slide. This is a handy table with gestational age and corresponding weight, endotracheal tube size, and epinephrine dose. Note, any gestational age that starts with a two gets a two and a half endotracheal tube. If things aren't going well, you'll find yourself here on the NRP algorithm. If the heart rate's greater than 60 but less than 100, go back to Mr. Sopa. Improve your positive pressure ventilation. Now, if the heart rate is greater than 100, just move to usual post-resuscitation care. If the heart rate's less than 60, you're going to need to place an endotracheal tube if you haven't done it yet, and start chest compressions. These are coordinated with positive pressure ventilation using an FiO2 of 100%. 1 and 2 and 3 in. 1 and 2 and 3 in. Attach an ECG monitor if it's not been done already, and make sure you get a UVC ready, umbilical venous catheter. If the heart rate's persistently less than 60, you'll find yourself here on the last step of the NRP algorithm. However, things may have gotten better if the heart rate improves over 60 but less than 100. Emphasize your positive pressure ventilation using the Mr. Sopa techniques. If the heart rate's persistently less than 60, you're going to need to give epinephrine. That's usually given by umbilical venous catheter. Now, the umbilical vein is the slightly larger floppy vessel that's located at around 12 o'clock as the umbilical cord enters the torso. You need to draw up and give 0.02 milligrams per kilogram IV epinephrine. You can also consider volume expansion using isotonic fluid or if they need blood, packed red blood cells. Both are given at a dose of 10 milliliters per kilogram and that's over five to 10 minutes and this can be repeated. Also, consider the possibility of a tension pneumothorax as the cause of persistent bradycardia. Here it is all together. Is the baby term, tone, and crying vigorously? Then just clamp and cut the cord at around 30 to 60 seconds and they can stay with the mother. But if they're not, you need to warm, dry, suction, and stimulate the baby. If the baby has apnea or heart rate less than 100, give positive pressure ventilation. Bag the baby. If the heart rate's still less than 100, you need to optimize that positive pressure ventilation using the Mr. Sopa techniques and consider endotracheal tube placement. Now, if the heart rate drops below 60, you're definitely going to need to intubate. Do chest compressions at a ratio of three chest compressions to one positive pressure breath. Make sure you optimize ventilation and consider UVC placement. If the heart rate's persistently less than 60, give epinephrine 0.02 milligrams per kilogram via the UVC, IV, or IO, and you can consider volume expansion or 
packed red blood cell administration. That dose is 10 milliliters per kilogram, and that's given over five to 10 minutes and can be repeated. And you may need to consider whether or not the baby has attention pneumothorax. Journal Feed is a quick, easy, fun way to keep up with emergency medicine. For more great educational resources just like this, go to journalfeed.org.